We're going to continue reading from America is the True Old World. And last time we left off at this part right here where it says Atlantis discovered Atlantis was in the Americas. Atlantis was in the Americas because of places like the Atlantic, in parentheses, Atlantis Ocean, Atlanta, Georgia, Atsland State Park in Wisconsin, in parentheses, it says Sons of Wakanda. Also, Atlantis was in Mexico, according to the book. India once ruled the Americas by Jean Matlock. Mexico has lots or a lot of places, names that contain Tilan, but were or but are the initial A and final Tiz missing in that popular Mexican place name. Hard evidence suggests that the Sanskrit is the father of most world-class languages. If we use Sanskrit to explain the true meaning of Atlantis, we'll learn that the initial A means not, no longer. The final tis derives from the Sanskrit desa, des or tes, meaning nation. Atlantis equals no longer the Tlan or Talon nation. When Atlantis, Atlantis sank under the ocean named after it, it certainly ceased to exist. That's very interesting. Haven't heard that one yet. However, the western most extreme of Atlantis, which is Mexico, is still above water. It continues to be Tolan or Tlan. Now what we have established, or now that we have established the meaning of the initial A and final Tis in Atlantis, we must search for the meaning of Tlan or Tolan. In, San in Sanskrit, Tlan equals surface, a place on the surface. The N refers to the people living on the surface. A, not no longer, Tlan, on the surface, Tes, Des, nation, land, Tlan or Tolan, in parentheses Mexico, is the part remained, or is the part that remained, above water. Even in Nahuatl, Tlan, Tolan, sur equals surface, a place. In Greek, Tlan means to bear, support, hold up. There is still another Sanskrit meaning, God, Shiva. Tlan equals people of God, Shiva. Sanskrit, Atala, equals not to bear, not to hold up, bottomless, underneath, underworld, hell. Atalan can mean any of the following, or excuse me, can mean any or all of the following. People of hell, people of the underworld. Patala and Atala were both Sanskrit names for America. We all know about the Atlantis, that is the eye of the Sahara in Africa, but few of us know about the Atlantis that was in the Americas. The Atlantis that was in the Americas is the oldest because of the Maya connection. Atlantis was, of course, the mother civilization of Egypt. So I hope this information settles all debates about who civilized who and who is the oldest. The oldest throne is in the Americas. Atlantis in Sula. It's giving us a map here. So it looks like right there is the United States. It almost looks like this uh, looks like this down here would be Mexico and this right here would be Baja California, but this looks like it used to go all the way up into like into Canada. And then all this. Oh, very strange. Anywho, what do you guys think of that map? Figure 12. This is a 1661 Sanson map that was created by renowned French cartographer, termed by some the creator of French geography, Nicolas Sanson. This map shows the Americas as the Atlantis, 
uh, in Sula. Atlantis was in Mexico, according to Dr. Clyde Winter's book, Atlantis in Mexico. Atlantis was an ancient spiral-shaped harbor with high banks or dikes lining the channels. Atlantis once existed near San Lorenzo Tino Chitlan, exactly as described by Plato. See figure number 13. Robles E. Guterres said that the extremely fertile plains of the jungles in the area are cross-crossed with the ruins of many ancient irrigation canals, as well as man-made irrigation lagoons, some with the masonry lining their banks still intact and still potentially usable. The archaeological remains in San Lorenzo supposedly belong to the Olmec culture. The Olmecs themselves were the survivors of the Atlantis disaster, so they did not come from Africa. They were already here in the Americas. I firmly believe this because there have been no Olmec heads found in Africa. So no, the Olmecs did not come from Africa. I believe the Olmecs became the Maya, or either they are the same people. I say this because... The Mayan long count calendar is the Olmec calendar, and the Mayans are just as old as the Olmecs. I believe the Olmecs became the Maya Indians. Also, both the Olmec and the Maya allegedly vanished as a civilization, so we do have the connection here. Additionally, Atlantis was in the Americas according to 1661 Sanson map of Atlantis and Sula, and the Hunt Lennox globe of 1510 see figure 14, and the book Atlantis, the Antediluvian World in 1882 by Igna- Ignatius L. Donnelly and the renowned Emerald Tablets of Thoth, 36,000-year-old sacred text. I've actually read that whole thing on this YouTube channel and done many videos on it, which was supposedly the original copies of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth were hidden in the pyramid of the, the sun in Teotihuacan, which is right in central Mexico. I went and uh, visited the, the ruins there one time. The priest king Thoth established Egypt after the destruction of Atlantis, his mother country, and built the Great Pyramid of Giza, according to the preface of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which states in pertinent part, The history of the tablets translates in the following pages is strange and beyond the belief of modern scientists. Their antiquity is stupendous, dating back some 36,000 years B.C. The writer is Thoth, an Atlantean priest king, who founded a colony in ancient Egypt after the sinking of the mother country. He was the builder of the Great Pyramid of Giza, erroneously attributed to Cheops. In it, he incorporated his knowledge of the ancient wisdom and also securely secreted records and instruments of ancient Atlantis. For some 16,000 years, he ruled the ancient race of Egypt from approximately 52,000 B.C. to 36,000 B.C. At that time, the ancient barbarous race among which he and his followers had settled had been raised to a high degree of civilization. Thoth was an immortal. That is, he had conquered death, passing only when he willed, and even then not through death. His vast wisdom made him ruler, over the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. Okay, it's got another map here with what looks like the, the, the rings of Atlantis, the ringed capital part of the city. Figure 14, this is the image of the eye of Atlantis in Mexico. All credits due to Gene Matlock and to MapQuest.com. I claim transformative use because the Americas was Atlantis, not just Mexico. So they're claiming all of the Americas was Atlantis here, even all the way down to the tip down here. And I believe that's Chile. It's the country way down on the tip. Figure 14, this is the Hunt Lennox Globe of 1512, which is the second oldest terrestrial globe in existence. The map shows you, South America, as Atlantis. It was enlarged, so you can see it. This is a 1607 map of the Atlantic, in parentheses, Atlantis world. See figure 15. As you can see, Atlantis was in the Americas for the most part. But Atlantis was also a global 
Blackamoor civilization, which is one of the main reasons why you will see the same ancient culture worldwide of pyramid building, mummification of their dead, serpent and sun worship, etc. Also here is a globe, orb, 16 of, or in the 1600s, of the Americas being described as the Atlantic and Sula from the Stanford University Library by Sanson, Nicholas, 1600 through 1667, and Mortier Pierre. Please click on the link of this map so you can zoom in and see it for yourself. Let's go ahead and uh, copy-paste that link really quick. Actually, I like when, when we do these these PDF kind of audio books because often they leave links that I can just put right into the, the browser and then see what they're talking about here. Okay, I guess this one doesn't exist. The page you're looking for doesn't exist. You may have mistyped the address. Well, um, I mean, I tried. We can try that again. Let's see if it works by... Maybe it's going to work this time. Okay, let's see. Stanford Libraries. Okay, now it's now it's working. I guess I did have to click it like a hyperlink. But it looks like it's... Okay, there it goes, there it goes. It was just taking a minute there. Uh, let, hang on, let's see if we can... If we can zoom in a little bit on this. There we go. So looks like there's two images on here. Let's see the second one to load. Okay, so there's the other one. Zoom in one more time. Okay, there it is. It's showing this whole landmass up here. It looks like where Canada was all just one big continent connected going way over to the left into like where I believe that would be where, where Russia is, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, back to the reading. Also, here is a 1600s map of the Americas being described as the Atlantic Insula from the Stanford University Library by Sanson. Please click this link of the map so you can zoom in. Okay, we think we did that one already. The Atlantic world in 1607. Okay, yeah, there's another map showing the same thing. Figure 15, this is a 1607 map of the Atlantic world, Atlantis. This map was taken from the Jamestown Visitor Center. Further evidence that the America, or the Americas, is Atlantis in the book. Ancient Oriental Masonry by... R. Swine or Swinburne Clymer, written in 1907, which reveals that religion and masonry originated in America and not Egypt. We are not indebted to either ancient Egypt for their religion of masonry, but to America. It is a fact that at Memphis, Egypt, in the pyramids under the guidance of the kings, the mystic rites of masonry were worked many thousands of years ago, but at the time, Egypt and the continent of America were one and the same. In America, rediscovered in the 15th century and repopulated in the 17th, was recovered Egypt and the Promised Land, or the land of the constellation of the eagle. This is a very significant statement because Thoth, the Atlantean priest king and founder of Egypt and all the arts and sciences, had come from the Americas since religion and masonry came from the Americas, and since the Americas is clearly the old world. Well, that would be very in alignment with, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Doriel's book, uh, The Emerald Tablets of Thoth. He, he was one of the first guys to translate and publish it in English, to the best of my knowledge, and Dr. Doriel also claims that the, the original Emerald, Emerald Tablets of Thoth, again, those were originally placed in the Teotihuacan Pyramid down in Mexico, and he supposedly recovered that original, the original writing of it back in like the 1920s. 
Okay, this is uh, chapter two. India superpower was in the Americas. Mu discovered. The Americas is Mu, the motherland. Civilization came from India Superior, which was in North America. See figure 16 and 17. All life and civilizations came from the uppermost region of India Superior, which is the Arctic North Pole, a.k.a. Mount Meru, Meri, Meri, goddess Denu Anu, a.k.a. Mu, which is the mystical Garden of Eden, see figure 18, and Hyperborea, see figure 19. It is the mythical... Yeah, yeah, it is in the mythical that we have found the truth. Greek proverb, Genesis of the King James Bible, 2, verse 10 through 14, lists four rivers in association with the Garden of Eden. Pishon, Gion, Chidekel, and or Chidekel, which is the Tigris, and Firat, which is the Euphrates. It also refers to the land of Cush, translated, interpreted as Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a Greek word that means burnt face or sun-darkened people, a.k.a. blacks, negroes. With regards to Ethiopians, Strabo indicates that the, they looked similar to the Indians, remarking those who are in Asia, South India, and those who are in Africa do not differ from each other. Turner Sharon, uh, 1834, the sacred history of the world as displayed in the creation and subsequent events to the deluge attempted to be philosophically considered in a series of letters to a son, volume two, Longman, page 40 or 480 to 482, retrieved 20 January 15th or 2015. This makes sense because it already firmly established that so-called black people were your first people. You can tell by looking at figure 18 and 20 that Mu region used to be warm and lush region. So yes, civilization could have started from north in accordance with many myths. Figure 18 is an unknown map of the Arctic North Pole, as you can see Eden and Meru right there. The Bible lists four rivers in association with the Garden of Eden, and you can see four rivers and the black magnetic cube, the Kaaba, in the center of the lake where the rivers emanate or emanate from that represents the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. James Churchward, in his book, The Lost Continent of Mu, refers to Mu as the motherland. And to be honest with you, Mu is a creation of James Churchward as a decoy for uh, for what his friend William Neven, Neven excuse me, had found in the Valley of Mexico. Churchward based his book, The Lost Continent of Mu, on the archaeological finds of his friend William Neven. William Neven found over 2,600 Egyptian-style artifacts in the Valley of Mexico that rewrite history because his find was dated to be over 50,000 years old. So, of course, his work was dismissed as a hoax, but his work didn't fit in with the current narrative of the Americas being the New World that was discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1942. The Nakal, in parentheses says Naga, tablets that Niven found gave you the sacred symbols of Mu. Mount Meru is considered to be the center of, of all the physical, metaphysical, and spiritual universe. Mount Meru is the black magnetic mountain, or the black cube, Kaaba, that is at the center of the lake, surrounded by four land masses. On the 1595 Mercator map to, uh, of the Atlantic Pole, the Atlantic North Pole, Mount Meru, resembles the swastika, the swastika is a physical representation of Mu, the mother, uh, C section, or C sacred symbols of Mu. Figure 23 shows us the swastika, and figure 22 shows us, uh, shows you, the mother Mu, Meru, Mary. In the center of the four corners, the four cardinal points of the zodiac, which emanates from the north star or pole star, which is the highest star and the first star that created all the other stars. The zodiac is called the wheel of life because all knowledge comes from the zodiac astrology. 
figure 23 is the zodiac wheel, the swastika, that revolves around the pole star, a.k.a. the great mother moon. The pole star is one of the brightest stars in the sky. It is so bright that it looks like the shape of the Christian cross from the sky. The Christian cross and the swastika are related because they both come from the great source of life, Mount Meru, which is the pole star. And they both symbolize the four corners, four cardinal points of the zodiac. Figure 25 is or is from the Nivin tablets, the group of 20 cross tablets. The number four also symbolizes the four great primary forces, the four elements which are executors of the creator's commands. According to legend, the creator's commands of the sacred four was, let the waters bring forth life. The sacred four acted as a cosmic egg, was formed out of the mud, the bed of the waters which came from the first of nature's uh, lives on earth, came forth as commanded. The Niven tablet alone is sufficient to show that these old Mexicans, the Olmecs, obtained their cosmology knowledge from the sacred inspired writing of Mu, the zodiac, the fountain head, aka the great mother, Mu, Meru, Merai, Mary, which is the pole star that created the zodiac and all life, all knowledge on the planet. Water. Life is renewed, anu, anu, at the Arctic North Pole, a.k.a. Mount Meru. As you can see by looking at figure 18 and 20, the Arctic or the Arctic North Pole used to be a warm and lush area as recently as the 1600s. So it's very possible that life could have come from the North, a.k.a. via Northmen Olmec Moors, uh, who became the Maya Naga. Yes, the old world looked very differently than we know it now. What happened? Well, a series of cataclysmic events happened that changed the geography of the world. That topic is for another book, so I will stay on topic. Now, in literal physical sense, the Olmec Moors, being the first human beings, are from Mount Meru because they are Mary men, a.k.a. renowned men of Mother Mary. Every man and woman are born from Mount Meru. Because everyone was born through the womb of a woman, as above, so below. Yes, the same way at Mount Maru, the pole star, north star, created the heavens, the stars, and the earth woman being a reflection of the great mother created man and woman. The human form is also a representation of Mount Maru because the human body has four major limbs, a navel center. Each limb of the human body represents the four cardinal points of the zodiac, and the navel is the north pole star which is the center source of the electromagnetic energy. As above, so below, the King James Bible tells you in several places that ye are gods. Now, you know why. Because the human is from Mount Meru. Polaris is short for pole, star, north star, and is, or and it is the highest star that is in the center of the galaxy. Polaris is also religious figures like Lord Brahma, Abraham of the Bible, Druva, Christ and his 12 disciples, the Zodiac, Meru, see figure 18, and the Tree of Life in the Garden of Eden are one and the same. Polaris is the central axis where the universe, the universal life force, the electromagnetic energy runs through the branches out to feed everyone and everything. Mount Meru literally creates the vortex, spiral spirit, of life that creates and sustains life. The Chinese called Polaris the great honorable lord of the heavens who gives spiritual powers and senses of purpose, direction, connectedness, and the ability to achieve one's objectives and to remember the finds, or excuse me, to remember and find one ways back to home source. Polaris in the first blue ray and its vibrations are felt by those on higher path or on the higher path to spirituality. It is also closely linked to Aquarius and the search for truth. All of the avatars in Manu came from Polaris, seeding and or seeding the root races on the Earth plains. A root race is seeded roughly every twenty four thousand years, and one of the oldest root races is the Hyperborean giants, which were the progenitors to the Olmec giants, the black race from Mu. The Olmecs were Moors because they come from the Mu Meru Merai Meri. Mu is code for Moors. Figure 27 shows us the image of Olmec or, or of Olmec Moor head. The headdress of the Olmec, Old Mexican, resembles 
of fez. Figure 28 shows you the tassels on the back of the fez. We all came from Polaris at some point, and we shall all go back. Okay, we'll uh, stop the video right there. Pretty interesting stuff so far. What do you think? What do you think about Atlantis being Amer the Americas?